I hope you're doing well this week. We certainly are doing great. Well, this is a week that we've been able to have our family all around us, and that has not happened for us since uh, the earliest days of the coronavirus. So here with us in Sandestin, we have our two children, Jonathan from Atlanta and Stephanie, who is from Birmingham, her husband, Wes, and our two grandchildren, Jack and Charlie, who are four and almost two. So it's been quite a circus. We, we've also had our grand dog, Walter, with us as well. So we're enjoying that, and the time has been like uh, a medicine for us in a lot of ways. It's been good. Now we're meeting again, and a word to you about that. If that's good for you, you come on. We, we feel like we've made all the precautions that we know to. We feel like Sandestin has set us up in a really good way where we can be distant, safe, and yet be together in worship. So if that works for you, you come. If it does not work for you, uh, you don't feel anything but encouragement and blessing from us. We understand. Uh, we're all trying to figure this thing out, and I'm glad I'm not in charge of figuring this thing out. Uh, so you do what you think is best for you right now. On these Sundays, I've been trying to preach on some of the virtues that we first learned about in Greek culture, but I'm sort of baptizing them, and we do find all of them in the Bible, and among them is the virtue of temperance. Now, Sunday, I had someone teasing with me and saying, now, preacher, how in the world are you going to preach on temperance? You know, back in the old days when preachers went to messing with temperance, it was always about drinking and, and eating. And those are two things that probably can, can uh, oh, I don't know, upset us maybe a little bit more than any other things that preacher might meddle with. I, that's not my intention on Sunday as we look at this spiritual discipline of being temperate, uh, having some moderation and self-control in our life. For the Greek, you had that sense of moderation so that you could better yourself in the world, so that you could make yourself more readily available for power or for control or for glory. Uh, in the Bible, when we speak about being temperate, we're doing it for love of God and love of neighbor. And that's a little different as we read into how the Bible speaks of self-control, we, we find that we're doing that for others. So Sunday, we're going to look at some of the things that mark balance in our life, why we would want to adhere to them, and how we can make them gifts to God and to others. Our texts are found in Proverbs, which is uh, unusual for us to look at three Proverbs on Sunday, but we'll do that. Uh, one of them is Proverbs 16, 32. He who is slow to anger is better than the mighty. And he who rules his spirit is better than those who take a city. Well, that's an interesting word. Another proverb we'll look at is Proverb 20, 15. Temperance as the control of strong drink anger, quarrelsomeness, and laziness. So we're going to look at the idea of our life having some balance and control and how that can be for the glory of God. Uh, you come on, don't be frightened of temperance. It's a, it's a very good virtue for all of us in getting through all of our days, but I think Sunday I can apply it for us as well in these most strange days, how being a bit more balanced in our life can help us get through this. You take care of yourself. I hope to see you Sunday. If I can be of any help to you, there's contact information in this email. You be sure and let me know, but uh, we'll look forward to seeing you soon, uh, as soon as possible for you. Take care.